Hi guys. Hi, this is Kimberly. Today I would like to share with you an adorable little tidbit that I found. It is of horrible photographic quality, but you will get the gist of it just the same. On May 2nd, 1994, Shanann Rusick had a picture she had drawn published in the local newspaper, the Aberdeen Moore County Citizen News. I'm estimating her to be in approximately third grade, maybe second. It was to go along with that day's weather report locally. I wish there was a clearer picture of it, but they wanted to sell me a poster of this page, but I declined, and they would have let me see the unblurred version of it, but of course, first I needed to order a subscription to the newspaper. I'm not complaining. I understand they need to buy wine and toilet paper and shit for the next heavy round of coronavirus where we're going to be ordered to shelter in place. I just know that's coming this fall, but I keep meaning to stock up on water in case we have another shelter in place order. I love the taste of water, especially frozen into cubes and completely surrounded by vodka. Nobody lecture me about drinking. I know, I know. Doesn't mix well with my meds and shit. I do miss the days of winding up for a hellacious hangover, though. So don't start up on me. I average about four comments a week of someone accusing me of pounding Xanax and Mad Dog 2020 or cheap wine and or whiskey. Why can't it ever be an elegant champagne or, you know, 100-year-old whiskey? No, it's always the cheap shit. I'm all elegant and shit, remember? It's always men. Why is that? Such bitter and anger and shit towards me. But I'm sorry, I don't have time to cater to your petty bullshit. And by sorry, I mean fuck you. Shanann grew up in Aberdeen and graduated from Pinecrest High School in 2003. Shanann, in her 20s, made a horrific mistake when she fell in love with and married the biggest dumb fuck in Mecklenburg County. The happy couple moved to Colorado in 2012, giving the entire metro Denver area a new village idiot. He flew under the cuckoo's nest, I mean the radar, until August 13th, 2018. Then he became not only locally, but nationally known for his ignorance, ineptitude, and fucking dumbass stupidity. So now, let's get into the intro of today's video. I'm featuring a very good friend of Shanann's, someone she had known since childhood. The very sweet and gracious woman's name is Kelly Burke. She and her sisters were neighbors to the Rusicks in New Jersey until they moved to North Carolina during Shanann's childhood. They lost touch after that, but through the magic of Facebook, they became reacquainted and picked up where they left off. Shanann had bamboozled, I mean, convinced her to join Thrive. I mean, encourage Kelly to be a victim. I mean, sell Thrive alongside her, or rather underneath her in the pyramid scheme. I mean, the direct sales ladder. Enterprise, pay up front costs to the chain, crooked dealings, to cough up a large investment fee to get your money and then to use you to recruit other suckers. I mean distributors unable to profit as such on pyramid schemes. I, I mean they're unsustainable. I mean well you can make it work and then you can kick back some of your profits to the people above you and then suck the life out of others as they've done you but for this life changing opportunity. I mean, the only way it can work is if you recruit more people to donate to keep funding the dream of the people already in the system. People get talked into it because they have about a depression going on. It's to the point of where they pull up to their place of employment and that wretched melancholy moment takes over them as their hope of the building being engulfed in flames just as soon as they arrive to work. And they realize it was wishful thinking, a pipe dream. So they join into something like this. And well, I know this is all irrelevant and impertinent, but I wonder, man, y'all know this about me. I love to pass on non-essential information to those that are still non-essential employees. 
Well, they've been working like hell on those blasted robots while you've been out of work. I saw one on the news the other day flipping burgers, and then there was another one stocking shelves at a grocery store, and yet another waiting tables at a restaurant. What will there be left to do? Well, when it gets to that point where we don't have jack shit to do, y'all please make sure to have your robot listen to my robot bitch and complain on YouTube. Then we'll drink cheap whiskey and wine. Then we'll have the robots clean up all the vomitus and shit. And then all that'll be left is one of those multi-level marketing business opportunities, you know, that cost little to no money to sign up to the scheme, I mean to the program. It'll be the best decision you ever made. Don't take time to think about this or you're going to miss this golden once-in-a-lifetime limited offer breakthrough. Fraudulent investing, pyramidal, structural, attitudinal, bottom of the pyramid totem pole, I can't breathe type of situation scam. With the pyramids that will tumble as soon as the new recruits dry up. Hell's bells, I don't even remember the last five minutes. Did y'all black out too? Kelly Burke was a childhood friend. In April of 2018, they went on one of those thrive palooza super duper exciting trips, you know, where they got all super duper pumped. And sadly, that was the last time Shanann and Kelly saw one another. This was Kelly's interview with Greg Zetner with the CBI on September 5th. The volume on this recording was very low. I did try to raise the volume level, and it helped a little bit, but I hope you can hear it okay. And I just edited out some of the very long pauses, wrote clearing, stuff like that. Thank you for listening. Much love and peace. Say hi to Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Say hi, Kimberly. Hi, Kimberly. <laughs> Say hi, Kim. Okay. You can say Kim. <laughs> Hello? May I speak to Kelly Burke, please? This is Kelly. Hi, Kelly. My name is Greg Zetner. I'm a field agent with the Colorado Bureau of Investigation in Denver, Colorado. Hi. Hi there. Thanks for hearing my phone call. Hey, I wanted to ask you a few questions. Do you have a few minutes to talk about uh, Shanann? Yes. Okay. Sure. Just so you know, this is, this phone is going to be recorded, so just so you're aware. Okay. 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 So let me, uh, let me get a little information from you. Do you have a middle name? Yes. Okay. And is this this the best number for you? This this uh, six two six number. Yeah, it's my phone number. What's your uh, home address? It's New Jersey. I never heard of that one. Where's that at? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, okay. How long have you known Shadan? I've known her since she was a little girl. We used to live across the sh we lived across the street from each other in Clifton. Okay. So, you, so how old were you when you guys met? Do you think? Um, I was probably 10, 11. And you guys were? See, I'm six years older than her. Oh, you are? So. Okay. Uh, yeah. Six. So you guys didn't really go to, like, school together. You were... No. Just no. Right. Okay. All right. And did you guys have kept in touch this whole time? Um, we lost touch when they moved to North Carolina. Okay. And about 10 years ago, we got back in touch through Facebook. Oh, okay. Visited each other a few times. North Carolina and Colorado. So you came out to Colorado a few times? Twice I was out there to visit them. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's see, 10 years, so you, so you found each other on Facebook about 10 years ago. Right, right. And then, um, do you remember, let's see, so you came out to Colorado two times. <laughs> when was the last 2000, time you were here? 2014. 2014? Right. That was the last time you were here? That was the last time I was in Colorado, yes. Okay. All right. So I assume you had uh, met uh, Chris as well. I did. Okay. All right. How often did you and uh, uh, Shanann, did you guys talk a lot on the phone or were you more text and Facebook stuff? Uh, uh, we did text, Facebook, some phone calls. Okay. We didn't talk as much as I would have liked. Yeah. Um, we did, I would say we probably text more often. Okay. The last time I had seen her, we had gone to New Orleans together in the end of April. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I saw that uh, so I, photo on Facebook. Yeah, so uh, we did see each other. And was that a uh, Lavelle event? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. So uh, with the uh, Lavelle also? I am not as much as she was into it, but... Yeah, she, sounds like she was pretty heavy into it. <laughs> yes, very much so. Okay. So did, you, did, uh, did she recruit you for that? 
She did. Okay. Alright, so you, you were in New Orleans for a Love Bell event. Sorry, I'm taking some breaks here, so I'm gonna try to catch up. So did you guys hang out quite a bit when you were in New Orleans? Yeah, we stayed in the same hotel room. Okay. Did you guys have a chance? That was for the whole five days. Okay. Did you guys have a chance to talk about their relationship, how is she doing with Chris, anything like that? As far as I knew, everything was fine. Okay. She never left? I, I had no... Not with me, no. Okay. Would that be something that she would normally talk to you about? Uh, I would have hoped she would have. I would have hoped that she had felt she could have. Um, but, like I said, as far as I knew, everything was okay. Okay. She talked to him while we were there. Everything seemed fine while with her talking to him. Yeah. So with, with her conversations with him, were they, um, were, were you around when they were talking? Did they seem contentious or they seem, you know, like normal? No, a few times in the room she would call him at night, you know, how are the girls, how are things, everything seemed normal. Okay. So like a, a normal conversation to have? A normal conversation, yes. Yeah. And were those phone calls pretty long in length or were they really short? No, I would say relatively short, not anything lengthy, you know. Okay. Not when I was around anyway. Yeah, okay. And like I said, I was with her most of the time. And you said that was five days worth, you think? Yeah, we, yeah, we were there five days. Okay. Um, let's see. When was the last time you actually spoke to her? Uh, it was a week before she went missing. We were texting. Okay. She had told me she was excited about going home. Is that when she was in uh, North Carolina with the girls? Yes, okay. right. And that was about a week before she went missing, you said? Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay. Anything unusual or anything stand out about that text string? No. Okay. No, we were talking about her being ready to go home, and she said absolutely she was ready. Okay. Did, you, did she say if Chris was with her at that point? She didn't tell me he was, but I knew he had gone there the last week she was in North Carolina. How did you know that? She told me he was going there the last week, and I saw pictures on Facebook. Okay, all right. Um, do you remember how you found out that she was actually missing, and the girls? Uh, it was Monday night, and I saw her brother's post on Facebook. Okay. What did the post say? Um, geez, what did the first one I saw say? Something along the lines of, please pray my sister and the girls went missing. Something along those lines. I don't remember exactly what it said. Okay. That was from her brother? It was her brother, yeah. Okay. All right. When you saw that, did you try to call her, text her, reach out to her, anything like that? I don't believe I text her, no. Okay. Because, no, um, I knew her phone was found at home. Her mom told me. I spoke to her mom that Monday night. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. And what did mom say? Uh, she was concerned. Okay. She had said that, you know, Chris backing his truck into the driveway was unusual, and just that he hadn't been his normal self while he was in North Carolina. Okay. Did she... Ex- she used the word standoffish, standoffish, was what she said. Okay. Yeah, but she didn't go into any more detail than that. All right. How did she know about the, uh, about him back in the truck? Into the, into the, uh, dr- garage, sorry. How did she know that he did? Yeah. I, I'm not really sure. I don't know if she had spoken to a neighbor, or if Chris had told her. I'm not, I'm really not exactly sure how she knew that. Okay. Had, had she talked to Chris that night, do you know? I don't know if she spoke to him that night. Okay. I had texted him. You texted and Chris? He was, yeah, and he was answering me like he didn't know anything. That was Monday night? Uh, the... I don't know if it was Monday night or Tuesday. I have the messages in my phone, but it might have been Tuesday. Could I get you to um, take screenshots of those and send them to me? Sure. That would be great. If yeah, if you get if you get text messages starting anytime on Monday concerning this. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was Monday or Tuesday, but I do. I did save them all. I have everything. Hold on. Where can I send them to? You can either text them. Let's see. Let me give you. Let me give you my email address. Might be easier. Okay. Let me just find a piece of paper to write on here. Okay. So basically, it's my okay. Okay. At state. Dot co. Dot us. Us. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And if you do the screenshots, that'd be great. I'd appreciate that. No so problem. How, how many? Uh, how many text exchanges did you have with Chris? There was a few. Okay. And that was. You think. Was that Monday night you said? I'm sorry. 
Do you want me to look while I have you on the phone? Oh, yeah, I got it handy. Let me, yeah, let me, I just have to put you on speaker. Hold on. Chris. Oh, it was Monday night at 6 o'clock. Okay. <clears throat> Is that 6 o'clock your time? Uh, yeah. Okay. And then the last time I spoke to him was Tuesday at 4.20 my time. And then I texted him on Wednesday afternoon, but there was no answer, so. Okay. What time on Wednesday does it say? Uh, 2.08 p.m. Okay. So yeah, there was quite a few back and forth messages. Okay. Yeah, if you'd send me those, that'd be great. I'd appreciate it. Okay. Um, let's see. Did, um, in those text strings, what's he, what's he saying to you? He's saying, go back. Um, I first said, oh my God, Chris, what's going on? He said, we can't find Shanann or the kids at all. And then he said the car was there. They were going to file a missing person's report in the morning if he didn't hear from her. He said he spoke to her morning between 4 and 5 a.m. And she went back to sleep. And she was still there when he left and the kids were still sleeping. And then he uh, said the cops were searching the house and the cops had her phone. And then I asked him how he knew something was wrong. And he said she didn't answer my calls or text today or anyone else's. And I was basically just asking questions like, um... Was the house locked? Was there any sign of a break-in? Things like that. Okay. Do you ever say anything about, um, like, meds being gone or anything like that? Meds not being taken, clothes or anything like that? Um, no. The only thing he said was that her, the car was there and her phone was still there. And her phone, okay. What else? Let me see. And then the last thing he told me was that the, he had talked to three different news crews and the dogs swept the house for scent. And that was the last thing he texted me. And that was Tuesday at 4.20. Okay. Anything about their relationship that ever kind of didn't sit right with you or seemed unusual or off? No, I thought they were the perfect couple. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much good. That's what everybody, I know. I, I am just, I, I can't even believe we're having this conversation. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I feel like it's just, it's happening to somebody else. I had met him when they first started dating in North Carolina, and he seemed like such a nice guy. I just, I, That's I don't understand any of this. Yeah, a lot of people have told us the same thing. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. Anything we haven't covered that you think we need to? No, I don't think so. Okay, let me look it back. I wish you could just say, Kelly, this is why this happened. Yeah, I had an answer for you. I really did. It's just, it's just, there's no words. There's no... When was the first time you came out to Colorado? The first time was 2013. Okay. When she was pregnant, actually. We were out there for the, her baby shower with Bella. Okay. And it was their one-year wedding anniversary. All right. And then in 2014, was there a special occasion why you came out for that one? That was around my birthday. When was the last time you actually saw Chris? That second, 2014, and when I went out there. Mm-hmm. Did you go on other other trips with, uh, with Shanann? No, not with Lavelle, no. Uh, just, yeah, just the one to New Orleans. That was just the one in New Orleans, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Well, that's all I can think of off the top of my head. If you think of anything else that you okay. think is absolutely important, if you'd send me okay. an email or give me a phone call, I'd appreciate that. Okay. And then if you'll Definitely. send those, uh, those screenshots. Yeah, I'll send you all the, all the messages. Yep, I uh, appreciate that. So, okay. Okay, well, I appreciate you calling me back, and you know, if you need to talk again, please let me know. Yeah, if you need anything from me, let me know. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.